As I was binging some videos over the holidays, I found out apparently there's a trend going on on YouTube, what I spend in a week, where people document how much and what they spend in a week. I see Graham, of course, LA, Seattle, Philadelphia, New York City, but wait, what about Silicon Valley? All of a sudden, I feel a strong call of duty in me that it's time to make a video to tell the story of Silicon Valley, right? I think this will be a really fun topic to cover as I will be going over what I spent in a week working as a designer in Silicon Valley during quarantine in 2021. It's gonna be fun also because I don't check my expenses, meaning both you and I will be seeing all the behind the scene of my spending for the very first time. Captivated yet? Let's begin. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. You might have an impression that Silicon Valley is flooded with VCs, super rich people wearing hoodies, living in mansions, all new grads are earning six figures, every millennial can afford Tesla. I can verify a lot of them are actually pretty true. But do I have the stereotypical Silicon Valley inflated lifestyle? Well, let's find out. Adding all the expenses together, I spent a grand total of per week working as a designer in Silicon Valley during quarantine in 2021. First up, I have the must spend money that prevents me from going homeless, rent. I live in a house with five other people. They either work at Stanford or some other tech companies in the area. We all get along pretty well. Sometimes we go on trips, we cook together, we hang out together, we play board games. I have my private bedroom and share a bathroom with three other people on my floor. It's manageable. Rent, water, gas, trash, internet, trash, internet, utility, trash, all together is about $1,200 a month. So divided by four, which you will get $300 a week. Compared to other private bedrooms or studio options in the same area, signing a lease on this place for $1,200 a month, which automatically comes with five new friends, great deal. Next up, groceries. Since I'm still working from home, I need to cook all my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I just go to a local supermarket or a Safeway to pick up some groceries once a week. Really basic bread, veggies, and meat. I'm not the demanding type that each meal needs to be so flavorful. I'm totally okay, I'm totally fine with some super basic food for every meal. But I would still eat out or order takeout or pick up or DoorDash, Postmate, Uber Eats, whatever food delivery from time to time, which I will cover shortly. The grocery cost varies each week depending on what's on sale and what I can get. On average, it costs me about $35 per week. Next, phone plan. I'm still on the exact same prepaid AT&T phone plan ever since 2015 when I got my first internship. And I like not being tied to a contract, so I keep the same plan. Even though it's prepaid, it still has got unlimited calls, unlimited SMS, unlimited slow data, and limited 8 gigabyte high speed data each month. The bright side is if I don't use all 8 gigabytes, whatever is left will automatically roll over to the next month, which also explains why I have 11 gigabytes for this month. So this plan plus fees and tax adds up to be $42.39 per month, which is about $10.60 per week. If you wonder why I only pay $40 for a $50 plan, that was because I'm on auto pay, which saves me $10 per month. Great deal. The Bay Area, you know, is not like New York City. It's not famous for its public transit. So I bought a used car in 2017. Since I paid it full, there's no monthly payment on that. But I do need to fill up my tank every week. I don't fill it all the way, just about five gallons to keep it running. And it's about $15 given the price in my area. In addition, that 15 minutes saved me 15% insurance charges me $54.14 a month, which turns out to be $13.34 per week. Now let's take a look at my daily expenses where I will break it down by day from Monday to Sunday. Monday. Breakfast will be toast, lunch, peanut butter sandwich, occasionally some eggs, dinner will be chicken and some veggies. It sounds very boring. It kind of is. But you know what's funny? I don't mind at all. 
a super bright side is I don't have to think about what to buy and what to cook every day. It's basically all set, which saves me a lot of time and hassle. In comparison, when I do eat out, I might enjoy it a lot more. All meals were covered in grocery costs. So zero dollar there and zero dollar for Monday. Tuesday. Same breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Since it was part of the grocery, again, zero dollar. All my meetings were in the morning, so I headed out in the afternoon to get some Starbucks top hike with light cream, 225, and finish some design work in my car. All I needed were Sketch, After Effects, and Framer, which were all in my laptop, and internet, which the Cordia Starbucks does provide, even in the parking lot. Wednesday. Zero dollar for food. Again, and a top pie with light cream. Ching! 225. Something happened on Wednesday night last week. My friend told me that my portfolio website is down, which means it's time to renew my domain to keep my portfolio alive and running. So I went ahead and paid for the renewal for $10.99. This is for the entire year of 2021. And if you do the math divided by 52, which comes down to about 21 cents per week. Renewing my domain made me realize GoDaddy actually automatically renew my hosting plan every year. GoDaddy. This is a funny name. GoDaddy. Why not go mommy or go brother? Which cost me $107.80 per year. That is $2.07 per week. Thursday. Again, you know the drill. The regular top hike with light cream. $2.25 there. But Thursday night is a special night. I have been doing this for a while, so I will consider this as an ordinary spending. At around 9.30 p.m., I hop into my car and go on a guilty pleasure trip to the pride of American food, McDonald's. I will get the same thing every time. Two apple pies, one McDoubles, and one McChicken, which adds up to be $5.32. Because my everyday meal is on the less flavorful side, this guilty pleasure, it's so flavorful. Friday, another typical afternoon coffee, and working from my car. Ching. 225. On Friday night, it's likely that I'm going to door dash something myself to revive my taste buds a little after days of eating something so simple. And this Friday, my friend and I got some Japanese curry. Highly recommend. Since he paid for the food last time, I covered the curry for this time, which cost me $38.78. So you can divide it by half. On average, I spent $19.39 on Friday night getting takeout with my friends. Saturday. Saturday morning is mostly about waking up later in the day and getting a brunch at a place that both you and I would know. Yeah, you're right, Starbucks. With a fancy but plain bagel and the usual coffee that cost me $4.20. I'll be staying in the car for a while to read some design books or use design thinking to optimize my investment machine, come up with some new fun topic for YouTube or just looking at the sky. Sometimes in the afternoon, I would go for a walk with friends, a park, or by the lake. Well, nature is free. It doesn't cost me anything there. For dinner, I just got chipotle. Dude, it's chipotle. Wait, are you sure it's chipotle? Anyways, that chicken bowl cost me $8.88. 888. Nice number. Sunday. Sunday morning is just like Saturday, right? The second day on the weekend. Starbucks. 420. I will read and watch Stephen calling out more BS on Wall Street analysts, Graham saving money, and Andre doing his usual magic trick for the intro. Then I will go home to finish editing the YouTube video for this week. To celebrate a successful new video upload, I will head to the classic California signature chain drive through Going in and out. Hey, can I get one double double with onions and one fry? Personal, All right, thank thank you. you very much. Have a great day. For one double double and one fry, that cost me seven dollars and thirty six cents. I know there are quite a bit Starbucks there, but I don't go there for a fancy drink every day. I go there for a very different reason. Maybe it's a designer thing that I'm really into the experience that Starbucks is creating. An uplifting, warm, comfortable environment with inviting ambience. They're offering me a kind of psychological comfort, I would say. Then I know if I go to get my drink, they will know my name and with a few words of chatting. Especially during the quarantine, these small and short moments of human interaction actually feel pretty great. Therefore, I'm perfectly happy with my top pie with light cream every time, 
instead of a venti purple unicorn frappuccino. It's not really about what I drink, but what I feel when I'm at Starbucks. It's my affordable luxury. If I stay home, I don't really drink coffee. I'm just fine with water. So I won't even spend 20 cents to make iced coffee like how Graham likes it. Of course, there's also some one-off charges like my Sapphire Preferred charges me $95 per year and I bought some books once in a while to read oil change from my car. See, that's why I want an EV. Or go on trips. I'm not including these in the math because they didn't happen this week and they're not really typical weekly expenses. But other than those, that's pretty much it. Wait a minute. You live in Silicon Valley but you don't have a Tesla? No, I don't. What about the all you can watch Netflix? Nah, YouTube works just fine. The listening is everything Spotify. Again, YouTube is just fine. What about a free one day delivery, Prime? Just cancelled. No boba? I actually used to get boba once in a while until I noticed it's about $8 per drink right now, which is almost the same as my Chipotle bowl. Dude, it's Chipotle! Anyways, facing that ridiculous reality, I just stopped going. I will only go if my friend and I are hanging out, go for a walk or something like that. Gym membership. No, running in the neighborhood, floor with napkins and ropes, just work as fine. Haircut? I cut my own hair. Adobe Creative Cloud. You know how much I don't like Adobe products, right? iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive. I have this. It's a pretty good design, by the way. So if I add all those numbers together, it turns out to be $434.57 per week. And you know, 70% of this is rent. Not bad, right? Actually, I don't know, you tell me. Let me know in the comment down below if you think this is ridiculous or it's acceptable, or it's cheap. For a grand total of $434.57, let me know in the comment section down below which expense do you find surprising? I don't really track my expenses mostly because I know there are only those many places for it to go. So that number is not really a surprise for me. Starbucks is really my affordable luxury and maybe arguably my entertainment. It's worth it, especially considering I don't have any of the Spotify, Netflix, Apple TV, Disney Plus, Hulu Plus, Plus Plus Plus. You know what I'm talking about, right? All those ones that you have. So that's how much I spend as a 27 year old designer working in Silicon Valley while working from home in 2021. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think I spent too much too little, or if you think I'm missing something that I forgot to cover, or just any thoughts in general. I read and respond to every comment. And last note, Graham Stephan, if you ever somehow for some reason see this video, feel free to poke some fun out of my Starbucks spending. With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you find this entertaining and fun to watch, go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Tschüss!